Hi everyone and welcome to this very special video from Colour with Claire. Now it's very special because as you all know by now I absolutely adore anything to do with horror and Alan Robert is the absolute master of the horror colouring book genre. So this is the third and most recent addition to his Beauty of Horror series. It's called Haunted Playgrounds and as you can see, we've got the beautiful red foiling that we usually have. This is to the front and the back cover. So excellent production quality. It's made by the same publishers, IDW. So we've got the same paper, the same production quality all throughout. So absolutely incredible quality. Now, as you open up the book, you'll see that we have this removable dust jacket, which is fully colourable inside. So pretty much every element of this book is colourable. Now on the inner cover we've got this blood red damask pattern and then we have the title page which again is fully colourable. Even on the pages with the kind of boring copyright stuff we still have loads of illustration to colour in so you can make scenes out of these sort of uh, extra pages even if they're not complete illustrations you can still colour absolutely everything which I love. We have Guliana's Missing Monster Parts, which is the hide and seek element in the book. So we're going to be looking throughout the book to identify where all of these items are hidden. And then we have the traditional poem that begins the book. And this one reads, Oh dear, she's at it again. Guliana is back to resurrect an old friend. But there's a tiny little problem with this beast from beyond. When she whispers his name, he does not respond. Seance and spells, nothing is working. Where is her monster? Where is he lurking? Oh no, she discovered a head on the floor. To make matters worse, there's organs galore. Was it you who dismembered Guliana's old pal? Someone's been dropping his limbs on the ground. There's a claw over here and a wing over there. His beating heart can be heard everywhere. Won't you help stitch her friend back together? Once he's alive, they can play forever and ever. Did you like how I did that really creepy voice? <laughs> it's probably quite funny rather than creepy, but anyway. Um, so these are all the different pieces of Guliana's sort of Frankenstein's monster that she has tried to create in her dungeon. Um, so we have to find all of those bits and pieces within the book. And here's where we move on to the main illustrations. Now this book, Haunted Playgrounds, is very, very much set in circus, fair, carnival type of... Um, kind of atmosphere so we have fun houses we have uh, rides and ticket booths and all the kind of stuff that you'd imagine you'd see at theme parks and carnivals so first of all we have the gates to the fun house uh, manned by this creepy sort of perio perio clown I think that's what they call them and then we have the ticket booth so it's five cents a ticket and here are your ticket masters <laughs> really really creepy now we have the first ride of the fun house, which is the dodgems. So Guliana and her dog are playing on the dodgems here. I absolutely love this double page spread. I think it will be incredible when it's completely coloured in. And I love how we've got this little severed hand down here as well. So usually at the carnival you would expect an ice cream stand or a popcorn stand, but this time we've got a little bit of a difference on that, a bit of a spin on it. So here you can come and buy a big bucket of freshly popped eyes and uh, here's a girl enjoying her bucket here. Now we have the entrance to the park, manned by this death figure with his scythe. Guliana's got some balloons here of um, ghosts and bats and jack-o'-lanterns. And then we have a beautiful sort of spherical design called the Scream Machine, which is another one of the rides. So you can see that Guliana and her pooch are having a lot of fun on there. Now this is the first one that I was going to colour uh, before I found another one later down in the book that I pr preferred to this but this is the first one that I thought I have to colour that immediately and um, this kind of character reminds me of the nun from The Conjuring, that really creepy scary nun and then we, in the background here we've got a really freaky ventriloquist with his dummy and I loved the skull pattern in the background and then sort of very very similar with the same pattern on the other side are these three um, members of staff I think from the fun house from the haunted playground now there's loads of different elements that you'd expect to find in a carnival in a theme park 
for instance, you must be this tall to ride. And we've got this little girl here, this little ghoulish girl, trying to see if she's tall enough. And we've got a mummy that's some sort of creature. It's definitely not a traditional mummy, but anyway. Um, then we have the Helter Skelter type ride. We've got Skull Tower Enter at your own risk. So who knows what's going to go on in there. Now this one is another double page spread and it's set behind a sort of mesh fence and we've got the clown and the zombie kind of creature but I really particularly like how creepy this clown is with him shushing you to tell you not to tell anyone what's going on in the haunted playground. Now here we've got another ride, Guliana's enjoying this one, it is a double page spread and it's set inside a kind of a ghost train but it's on water so um, we have the octopus sort of things coming out of the water, we've got all the signs, we've got the creepy kind of cave like uh, background, we've got a ghost following her, it's all really super creepy and this would look amazing coloured, you could make the cave all really dark with like elements of light coming from just this area down here so it's all really creepy. The next page we've got the strong man and we have a banner here for you to actually name him if you wanted to. You can see that he's lifting weights made of pig's heads, which is uh, lovely. And he stood on top of all of these bones and carcasses. On the next page, another one that you can create a name for at the bottom here. This is the magi magician with his assistant who is levitating through this hoop. Then we have a couple of characters from the freak show. We knew that there were going to be freaks and geeks in this book. And we're starting off here with the lioness. So it's this hairy woman that is completely covered in fur on her face. And then on this one, we have the uh, sword, sword, sword swallower, <laughs> uh, the sword queen. And I love the um, surrounding sort of frame to this as well. This one is a double page kind of wallpaper spread featuring carnival um, carousel horses which are obviously made of bone and they're all dead and some of them have sort of mermaid tails it's all kind of freaky that's what we love in these books so on this side we've got these clowns practicing their guillotine routine and as you can see on the next page it sort of follows on we've got a bucket full of clown heads there The next page is the throw ahead and dunk the dead. So this is sort of intention to be a double page spread, but you could do them as separates, but they do sort of follow one from each other. So you've got this kind of skull clown that is being dunked into the pool when these kids chucking the severed heads at the target. And here a double page spread with a clown caravan. So this is sort of a tour bus full of all different kinds of clowns and uh, if you want to get on there, I think you're getting on at your own peril. Looks pretty creepy. So here we have what looks to be some sort of teacup ride, but it's a very, very scary one. So we've got all the skulls sat inside the teacups and it's made of this huge horned head. And then on the other page, we have a few vultures ripping out the clown's insides. Nice and... Uh, <laughs> nice and lovely if you're just eating your dinner and um, in the background we've got a big sort of moon or a sun so you could do a great sort of sky background on that here we have the hall of mirrors so you can see that these guests are looking at their reflections all kind of distorted and really kind of super fun to color i think this one will be so again two pages that aren't a double page spread but they do connect with each other so here we've got all the stalagmites and stalactites um, and it looks like some sort of railway sort of railway cart type uh, ride. We've got bats in there as well. So I think we might still be in a cave of some sorts. And then here we've got a rather dejected looking skeleton clown just sat on what's probably a grave uh, with this beautiful sort of archway of roses and thorns all around him with a few skeletons sort of mixed in. Here we've got a little girl sat with her dolly and her little friend with huge wings and scary teeth and she's just sat next to the tree just having a little bit of chill time. 
This one is the pirate ship ride and Guliana's just having a whale of a time just jumping off that. It might not even be Guliana actually, I think it's another girl, but it's called the ghost ship. So we've got a little bit of a fence, we've got the whole shebang. And then on this side, we've got Guliana and her friend playing on the stilts. I absolutely love this. I love the whole filigree heart that's behind it as well. It's Guliana's little boyfriend. This one's another incredible set of illustrations. So we have the contortionist, which is really creepy even if you go to a normal circus. So uh, Alan definitely didn't have to go too far to make it even creepier. So I love the whole position that she's in, the whole pose, the mask as well. And of course, all of her limbs are all stitched up. And then on this side, we have a bunch of skeletons doing their sort of um, pose. Uh, what would you call it? Like a um, synchronized kind of pose. A bit like a cheerleader pose, I suppose. So here we've got, we're inside the big top, we're inside the tent, and we've got a couple of sad clowns, we've got the big curtains, and then we've got the hand down here holding on to the puppets and sort of manipulating them and controlling them. We've got another couple of clowns here, this sort of behind this strange sort of lines. It could be mist or I don't know, it's, it's up to you to interpret what you think these clowns are hiding behind. It's super creepy anyway. I love these big up close clown faces. This one's awesome. So we have the hot dog. This is carnival fair, very traditional, but the hot dog is actually a bat and it's all covered in a beautiful sauce, which will probably not be ketchup, probably be blood um, or some sort of green gunk. Um, and then on the other side, we have that magician again, pulling a rather decimated rabbit out of his hat. And I absolutely love the look of this magician, his kind of greasy hair slicked back and his clown features. So Guliana's come to the end of that ride now. She's on the log flume this time and it's coming out of a cave, which looks like a skeleton with the eyes and then into all of this water. We've got the shark coming up here. We've got all these huge waves and again, the octopus tentacles as well. We've got a couple of carnival favorites. We have the skeleton dog with the big ruff and the clown hat on with this kind of big star behind it. So you could make a really, really bright, vibrant, sort of like an advert for the circus out of this. Same again on this side with the star background, but we have the cannonball man manned by these clowns and he's gonna light that aflame. So the clown's gonna go Phew! Absolutely awesome. I love this book. It's so much fun. Now again, we've got another kind of wallpaper type spread. This time we've got the circus big top. We've got the bear sat on the, the stool thing. We've got the cannon thing. We've got the <laughs> lolly thing. We've got the clown thing. It's all things. So um, yeah, love that one. Now here we've got the horoscope Fear Your Future Fortune Teller. I'm going to be colouring this one as well very, very soon. Absolutely love it. Fortune tellers are really creepy, especially those that sit there and they're mechanical and they sort of come to life when you put the coin in. I also really love this illustration. So it's the pack of tarot cards with the skeleton hands and we've got the fool and then a couple of others. So I think that that's an awesome illustration. Tarot is very sort of creepy anyway, isn't it? So this is another sort of wallpaper illustration. It's symmetrical and there's not really too much you can say about it. It's got a couple of lungs here, which I believe we're looking for, for Guliana's monster. We've got axes and skeletons and all sorts of bits and bobs in there. Now, as you can see, this is the one that I have colored so far. And this is the Whack a Soul Knock 'em Dead. So a bit like Whack-A-Mole and you've actually got to whack all of these kind of zombie dead hands that are coming up out of the holes. So I coloured this with Prismacolor pencils and um, I had a whale of a time colouring it, absolutely loved it. It took me around about seven or eight or maybe even nine episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine to colour this, um, which I've just started watching. And um, yeah, so I really love colouring that. I love how bright and vibrant it is. I might even do a background on that yet, I'm not sure. Now over on this side, We've got the um, skittles or the bowling pins. And of course we've got a giant eyeball to be the actual bowling ball. 
I love these illustrations of Guliana and her friends. So as you can see, they're just sat on the tire swing with the leaves falling down. It would be a nice scene if they weren't dead. <laughs> and then here we are with her other friends on the seesaw. Um, we've got little skeleton monkeys or something climbing up on his head too. Now, this is another thing I love about Alan's books is these kind of portraits that are framed. Um, we had the family portraits in the first book and here's a kind of clown portrait in a beautiful ornate frame and just so, so creepy. These clowns have the creepiest faces. It really reminds me of the last series of uh, American Horror Story where the clowns were sort of following her if you haven't seen that, but they were really creepy. And then we've got a couple of skeletalized, skeletalized? No, I don't think that's a word. <laughs> Animals behind the cage. So they're obviously in the back of the circus being caged up, waiting to go on stage. Now we've got Guliana and another kind of Nosferatu friend here that's in this big roller coaster, loving it. His hat's coming off, her hair's blowing in the wind. And then you notice on this side that all of the um, roller coaster is actually breaking as they're on it. So they're going to end up flying off that. So here, this is really interesting. It's very different to everything else in the book. And it's a set of st spiral staircases with all of these very creepy creatures coming down it. These three on this side, they're sort of dressed in very kind of old costume, all ripped and very vintage kind of clothes. And then on this page, all three of them turn into these incredibly creepy ghouls with chains and flowing sort of blankets on them whatever else so that's really awesome so you've got them in their kind of human form even though they don't look human and then in their ghoulish form as well here's a very very detailed um kind of wallpaper type page so the detail on this is very very small you will need incredibly sharp pencils or fine liners to color this we've got a couple of gulianas we've got our clowns and um, a few little creepy emblems as well. Now we've got some more circus favourites. This lady here is kind of a skeleton mermaid and she is playing with this kind of skeleton dog who's got the ball. So it's kind of like the sea lion who balances the ball on his nose, but of course it's gotta be creepy. So we're gone with a skeleton dog. And on this side, we've got the double-headed kind of Medusa woman. So she's got two heads. They've got snakes all over. I love these drapes in the background as well. And we have this kind of mandala made out of very creepy faces. And just um, these kind of remind me of intestines and teeth. You could interpret them how you want. So, Guliana has come to the end of the book and she has found all of the pieces for her creation and here he is in all of his glory. We've got Guliana jumping for joy, it's alive! And uh, here is her creature who looks a little bit like a minotaur um, and he's all stitched together and ready to creep everyone out. So, the last illustration, the last main illustration, is this werewolf here jumping from Big Ben, or you know, any kind of clock tower, but it's gotta be Big Ben, with the moon behind him as well. There's been a very similar illustration to this, and I, I think it was the first book where the werewolf is sort of tearing across the landscape, and this one is awesome because he's just coming straight at you. Now this here is the illustration from the front of the book, as you can see. And it has very much thicker, darker line work and it just allows you to colour the front cover if you wanted to, which is a really nice addition. Here we've got a couple of create your own pages, which always feature in these books. So you can create your own creepy creatures, fetuses made out of all different kinds of animals, whatever it is you want to put in those jars, you go for it. And then we have the colour palette. So this appeared in the second book and it's also been included in this one. So there are several different scrolls that you can test out your colours on. And I think instead of just having a blank test page like a lot of colouring books have, it's just really neat to have them like sectioned on scrolls because you can still make something out of this page if you wanted it to be sort of a feature page as well. Here is all the answers to Guliana's missing monster part. So you can colour these thumbnails as well if you had the very tiniest fine liners. And then we have the final ending poem, which usually leads on to tell us a little bit about when we're gonna see Guliana again. So this says, you followed her rules, you played all her games. The path you now choose may lead you astray. Just when you thought the evil was over, 
Guliana appears in a place way colder. Oh, Christmas comes but once a year. Your stocking is filled with nothing but fear. She's been sizing up a brand new prize. He's got a bright red suit and a sleigh that flies. Guliana's back with her old spooky tricks. Wait till you see what's in store for good old Saint Nick. So Guliana has got her evil plans going again. Looks like she wants to kidnap Santa. So we've got her here in her Santa hat. And of course, this alludes to the next book in the Beauty of Horror series, which is the Christmas special. And that will be coming out, I believe, in October. Don't quote me on that, but I'll leave links in the description for you to pre-order that if you want to. But I'm super, super excited about that to see a creepy Christmas book uh, from Alan as well. Now, this is the first of the three books that he is, or the three products that he's um, releasing this year. So this is Beauty of Horror 3. Then we've got the, the Christmas book. And he's also releasing the deluxe uh, horror colouring set. So again, all of the pre-order links are going to be in the description for you to go and click and definitely get your orders in for these. As we know from Alan, it's going to be incredibly great quality. We're never disappointed with anything that he brings out. And this book is certainly not an exception. It's absolutely wonderful. I'd go as far as to say that this is my favourite beauty of horror book so far. I just love the fun carnival elements of it. Um, it's things that we all recognise, but it's been given that scary twist that Alan is so brilliantly does. And yeah, absolutely love it. So it's going to be out next month, July. And if you want to try and secure yourself a copy before that, IDW have very generously sent me a second copy and I'm going to be giving this away to one of you guys. So also in that description box, you're going to find a link to my blog and that is where you can sign up to try and win yourself a copy of The Beauty of Horror 3. So go and do that right now. It ends in a week's time and you could have your hands on this book before anybody else. So really hope that you've enjoyed this review. I hope that you love the book just as much as I do. Do let me know in the comments and please don't forget to click that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.